Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. I'm going to be posting this on our YouTube channel with uh, Kingdom Flame Ministries. And I just wanted to share um, a session that we had with a, a young lady um, that came to us. Our friend Sally uh, approached me and called me up on the phone and said, Richard, you know, um, you know, would you have time to, uh, to minister to this lady? She's planning on having some surgery in her body and just wanted to know if you could pray for her and, uh, and to bless her. And so if you don't know anything about us, my, my wife's name is April Stutzman. She uh, has written two books. She's an author. She's a teacher. She's a preacher of the uh, things of God. And one of her best-selling books that she has is called The Serene of Spirits. So you can just check it out. Uh, on YouTube, you can check it out on Amazon, uh, the audiobooks on several platforms as well as the ebook version internationally around the world. And, uh, and for me, uh, we've been uh, ministering uh, and we've been going to different places overseas. We've been with uh, Charlie Shamp with the Africa Crusades, uh, been with him to uh, India, and also down to Brazil. And my wife is with us in Kenya, Africa. We saw a mute and deaf young boy about eight years old uh, was able to speak and hear for the first time. And you know, when you see the supernatural things that take place in these lives, and that we are the instruments, that we are the servants of God to bring deliverance, to bring healing, to bring freedom to those things, uh, it just changes you forever. And you can never go back to whatever that comfort level that we have uh, that God has called us to do. So, but let me just share this story with you. Um, so we sat down and everything, and my wife, April, was uh, interviewing, asking questions with this young lady, and, uh, you know, her name, kind of the age bracket, that sort of thing. And she and Just for the, the sake of this uh, story testimony, she was roughly about 55 years old. Uh, that will give you a time frame of the whole session here. And uh, so we asked whether or not she had any miscarriage or april asked for any miscarriage or we asked anything about uh, whether or not uh, she had an abortion things of this nature because we just said you know we, we deal with holistic the mind the will the emotion we deal with the whole person uh and all of god it's called them be because you can be advancing in the spiritual realm and your gifts but you could have some flaw in your soulless realm which is your mind your will the emotions you could still have oppressed depressed things in that nature. I mean, I went through a terrible divorce in about 14 years ago, and I know for two years what oppressed, depressed, and even thoughts of suicide at some point in time in my life that now I share very openly with and wanting to set other people free from that. Because when you go through a trauma as such of a divorce, it really does test who you are. And I also had some character flaws when it comes to my identity of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, I would say the five things that I used to be insecure. Why would God ever use me? I'm second class. I'm little old Richard. Uh, I'm just, you know, uh, the littlest of them all in the family. And so when you have those character flaws of your identity, uh, it limits, can limit some things to God. Even though I've seen uh, healings and miracles take place during that time frame. So uh, that's another story with my personal life with with, with folks but as she said this I was in in the room and I turned around and inside my uh, heart it's kind of like a, ga a gagger a little thing go t -t 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 well I'm just starting to discern more uh, either the motives or the words that people speak and it's developing uh, in my life I call it the sixth sense uh, but uh, you can call it whatever you want to Jesus said he knew the thought and the intent of people's lives or many times Jesus had to escape because he knew that they were willing to kill him in that town. And he said that they, he slipped, slept through. He slipped through. So whether he slipped through, he went invisible, transported, whatever, that's okay. Uh, he made it out there alive. And so I just turned around and asked her questions. Again, there's no shame, guilt, condemnation. You know, by chance, you know, did you have an abortion? And she said no. And I'm like, okay. And I still, like, in my heart was a, a question mark, like, hmm. Well, Lord, I don't know why, but that the answer I'm getting just didn't sit well. And we have to be careful of when we have the gift of discerning that we don't become judgmental. 
uh, that we don't become critical and we don't become condemnating and rise ourselves up in pride and arrogance. And so it's a balance of all those things. And I'm still walk, walking it out, to be honest with you guys. And I kind of left the room and came back. April said, you know what? There was a point in time in your life that I see that, that a guy came into your room and he came in and molested you. And at this point in time, she is just shocked what April just said. And uh, she goes, yes, she goes, we need to deal with that and ask Holy Spirit for forgiveness, repentance, and things of this nature. And so we dealt with those things internally in her heart. And a few minutes later, I said to her, I said, you know what, you're not, we're not counselors. Um, we're not counselors that will go by books, but you're dealing with a prophet, and you're dealing with a seer, and there's a lot of things that we see in divine healing, and that um, sometimes God shows us these things, not everything, to bring holistically healing to people's emotions and healing in their bodies and setting people free. And so a few minutes later, maybe four or five minutes, she is uncontrollable. She is just crying. Woo! And I'm not making fun of her. Just hear me, guys and ladies. I mean, like, ah! and this went on like four to five minutes. And I first said, dear Lord, you know, is this repentance? Or is what is going on here? Because I was trying to discern, is this normal? Is it, uh, it, what are you doing here? You know, and so, and you know, I don't want to be quick to jump and, and to judge and to discern uh, the person's heart or motives until God said so. Otherwise you just put it on the shelf. And so about four or five minutes later, she stopped. And she says these words like, I, 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 I had a, an abortion. And she stopped. And I'm like, Lord, that's what I was feeling. She said, I had abortion when I was 16 years old. And here she is at 55 years old. And I truly believe that her husband that she was married to does not even know about this child. I don't even think too many people even know about it, but she hid it. But in the middle of her chest, let me step up her bed, right in here, she actually came because she was having a, a, a ball in there, like a tumor or a growth or something in there, an object. Okay, let me just say it that way. But when in doubt, you know, best thing to do is describe what it is. You don't necessarily have to say those other things like tumor or growth. Ab amorality, I mean, it's it was something in there that they were gonna operate on. And uh, as she was praying for this, um, I just stopped and just said, hey, let's just pray about it. And, uh, and so we dealt with the spirit of murder and led her through uh, repentance, uh, things in this nature. And then all of a sudden, I just stopped for a minute. I said, you know what? We're going to practice hearing the voice of the Lord. And this is one of the ones that really is going to make you go, ah, oh, it's going to make you like, this is crazy. Uh, how did you do that? And I, I don't know. All I know is April and her I are paying money to be mentored by Emma Stark. And uh, one of the challenges is in her life and the classes that really, I really am not comfortable. I don't like it, but it's made me stronger, just to be honest with you, is that it's easy to get words of knowledge and then prophesy to them and pray for them. But what if you had to approach somebody and you didn't have all that, and the Lord's been doing that with me lately, where you wait till the last minute, approach somebody, and then boom, it comes to you. And uh, my method is typically not that way, and so God has turned that around. So I'm thankful for that aspect of it, that you know that she's challenging us to step out and do things a little bit differently. And so that was part of one thing on the street ministry when we go out and eat somewhere. But this time I said, you know what? Uh, my wife said uh, a few minutes later, you know what, we're going to give this baby a name. And I'm like, baby, a name? And we've taken many, many classes from different types of ministry and training. And I said, man, I must have slept through that one. I don't remember that session at all that we're supposed to give the baby a name and all this stuff. And, and I'm like, okay. So April's like, okay. And I just pause. I said, stop just for a minute. We're going to ask Holy Spirit. We're going to ask Holy Spirit to give us a name. For this child now i'm i'm shocking myself i'm like you know what we're gonna we're just gonna jump man we're gonna go parasailing we're gonna jump through the airplane 
you know, parachute or non-parachute, we're going to jump. <laughs> That's what it feels like, to be honest with you. Can you imagine jumping out a, a live airplane and you got this parachute, but you don't know if it's going to work. You don't know whether or not you're going to get the answer or not. You know, at that point in time, it wasn't whether or not I was going to hit or miss it. If I would have missed it, I would have missed it, guys. And I'm okay with that. I, I've learned uh, over the years just to be comfortable with what you have. And so I said, okay, we're going to get it. I said, ma'am, I said, can you, do you have a name for your baby? And she said, no. I said, at this very second in time, do you have a name for the baby? And she said, no. So I said, okay. So I said, we're going to get a piece of paper. We're going to practice. And we're going to ask Holy Spirit to give us the name. And so we got a piece of paper out. And I put down three names. One, two, three. And then my wife, April, did the same thing. But she didn't write on the piece of paper. Next time I will have her do that. She did it in her head. Uh, because we like to show people uh, transparency, number one. And number two it's a more of an impact of having a written down name versus uh, just the name itself. And that's okay. I do both. Uh, so we're there and I'm asking Holy Spirit, taking 60 seconds, writing down the first name, writing down the second name, writing down the third name. I'm like, okay, I think I'm done. So then I said, honey, are you done? She said, yes. And so then we asked the lady who was there. I said, so do you have a name for your baby? She said, no. So, let me rewind. She doesn't have a name for the baby when I stopped and asked Holy Spirit for names. I'm done with my names on my piece of paper. I'm now going to ask her again, do you have a name for her baby? And she said no. It kind of reminds me of, of the, the prophet Jeremiah where Jesus says, I knew you in your mother's womb before you even in the mother's womb. I knew you. Okay, so this is a scripture verse that I will use in conjunction with this um, uh, this session, deliverance session, healing session. And I looked at her again. Do you have a name for your baby? She said, no. I said, okay, we're going to take a few minutes and we're going to ask Holy Spirit to give you a name that you desire for this baby, this precious baby. And so uh, she waited and... Uh, she said, okay, I have a name for the baby. I said, well, awesome. I'm extremely nervous at this time. <laughs> this is not something I do. This is the first time I've ever done it this way. You know, and so I've done some other things. But you know what? It just You just step out. And I appreciate Emma Stark and her teaching, her teams with Nathan, uh, the other team members that are on there. Uh, just to teach it and things of this nature and so um, so we're there Sam just all of the gang on there uh, that are, are just on the sessions with their husband David and so I just uh, and we also have a training through Charlie Champ uh, with uh, a team member that he brought in to, to prophesy other people so I just love how God puts different streams together with different teachings and such how to do those things and so um, so we just waited and I said, okay. Uh, I always ask people this question. I said, you know what? How many letters are in the alphabet? And I always like to take 27. Um, I didn't do well with English. And so if some of my stuff in my posts uh, may be incorrectly grammar, realize this, that uh, in high school, I failed every single year to four years. I had to go to summer school and with English and barely made it out. And so, if there are some incorrect grammarly pronunciation wordings, please give me grace. <laughs> so, anyhow, we'll get back to the story. And so we're there, and I asked her, or I know, 27 letters. It's actually 26. I said, all right, give us the first letter. Oh, I asked her, I said, you have the name of the baby? She said, yes. And I said, okay, so is the first letter of the child start with J? Dun, 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 dun. You have no idea what's running through my head at that point in time. But let's go back to the story. <laughs> and uh, she said, yes. And I'm like, yes, dear Jesus. But I got the first letter. I mean, I was excited. I mean, I don't know what the, 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 the percentage is, but it was awesome to get that first letter. And I said, okay, okay, all right. I had to calm myself down. I was too excited. And I said, okay, we're going to practice the second letter. I said, okay, um, is the second letter... A O, and she said yes. 
And I'm like, this is just crazy. And I just couldn't believe it, just to be honest with you. I, I, I wanted to practice, but man. And I said, okay, so is the child's name Joseph? And she said, no. And I said, okay, and that's okay. My, my Ultimately, my first choice was Joe, and the second was Joseph, and the third was Jesse. Now, what people don't know is my middle name is actually Joe. And my girls, Rhiannon and Brooklyn, used to teach, tease me when I was young that what mother would call their son Joe. And I said, Lord, there can be no way that she's going to call her son Joe because it's just Joe and it's not Joseph. And my son's middle name is actually Joseph. And uh, so I wanted to say that to you because I went ahead naturally and said, who would name their son Joe? Well, you know what? This mother in front of my eyes named her son Joe. I said, for you to know what God has done, you will know without a shadow of a doubt that your son is in heaven. And I said, here's the other thing, is you mentioned about your grandmother who's in a nursing home is waiting around. Now, in your comfort of comfort, you're gonna be able to go to her and let her know that when she passes on to the other side, that she is going to be able to wrap around her arms around her son or her grandson, Joe, uh, and welcome. He's gonna welcome her. And it's just gonna be an awesome place. And I said, also, you'll be able to uh, tell your daughter who's three years old that she has a son, a brother, and that with comfort in that, it's gonna be a release. Now, if you gotta remember, if she's 55 years old and she had the abortion when she was 16, that's 35 years of not telling a soul, not telling anyone, and living with that secret, um, living with maybe shame, guilt, and condemnation. And, you know, like I say to, to people, there's no shame, guilt, condemnation in Christ Jesus. We go through the process of internal healing to get those things out to make us who we are. And so I just want to encourage you and your walk with the Lord. If you, if you have gone through something like this, just call out the name of the Lord and he will forgive you. Just call out the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit will come. He's the best cleansing agent there is of Holy Ghost. He's the best uh, comforter, the paraclete who comes and cleans out those things in your life and even strongholds to make you who you are. And so she left that day healed, whole. Um, that day she leaned back in, in, in uh, the chair that she was at and the inside of her where the uh, inside of her stomach over here where the knot was at started to dissolve. Uh, I, two days later she said she canceled her appointment with the doctor uh, and that she was going to wait. And I haven't heard back since then, but uh, I'm just astonished with everything that took place. But know this, he who began a good work in you will complete it. And that he has promised you a future and a hope that he will equip you, he will provide the people around you and the finances in your life where you're at to get through the times of your life. And so I just want to let the story to encourage you, to uplift you, that God makes all things new. And when you confess your sins, the Bible says this, if you confess your sins to one another, that he would truly forgive you. And really what happens is a burden comes off your shoulders, the burden comes off your head, the burden comes off your mind, of keeping things a secret, things of that nature, that God would make you whole and renew in your life and just make you who God has called you to be. So I just want to encourage every single one of you that listen to the very end of this wonderful testimony, uh, if you like, you can subscribe to our ministry page of Kingdom Flame Ministries and sign up for the newsletter. We have a, a special uh, a price for two books for one price. I think it's $19.99 for Discerning of Spirits as well as uh, miracle, uh, Gateway to My Miracle or Fibromyalgia that God healed April of. Uh, and so uh, just check it all out. She's got some YouTube channels out there called Glory Stories on every single podcast you can think of. Uh, she has taken a break for a while, but uh, she has uh, interviewed several people, including Joan Hunter and other people, uh, uh, Adrian, Adam, those folks. Uh, 
um, and other people Karen it's on it so just be blessed by it uh, she also did a, a short run of um, of another session of pod stories just check that out just 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 uh, search for April Stutzman and you'll see both broadcasts that are there and hopefully we'll get that back up and working uh, and if you want that's the audio version of it if you want to listen to the live video you can go to the YouTube channels and uh, glory stories by April Stutzman and see the, the live pre-recorded live uh, glory stories and that and Jennifer Martin's on it and some other people so all right be blessed by this and so father God right now in the name of Jesus if there's anybody out there who has had any type of an abortion any type of miscarriage any type of loss of a child Lord, I just bless those mothers right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that, Lord, that you will give that person a name of that child, that you will bring comfort, you will bring release, and, Lord, you will bring uh, restitution in their lives, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, if there's anyone out there right now, by the sound of my voice, Lord, that who's had uh, miscarriage after miscarriage and they have been desperate to know God that I want a child, but for whatever reason, I have not been able to conceive and have a child. And Lord, I just declare and decree, Lord, that the angel of the Lord will come right now and touch their body, touch the uterus, and touch their organs, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, if there's any women out there that the estrogen level is low, I declare and decree as a man of God to come up right now in the name of Jesus. I didn't know I was going to do this, so I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. So, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the estrogen level right now in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, if it's a man, Lord, if the semen is low, Lord, I command right now to come up right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, I'm reminded, Lord, your word says we have not because we ask not. And so, Lord, I just declare and decree, Father, that, Lord, out of this, this video of testimony at the very end, Lord, that a, that, that a mother will conceive and have a child from this prayer session. Now, Father, I declare and decree, Father, that, Lord, if anyone who's had any sort of choices of life that they're not happy with that they made, Lord, that there is forgiveness and grace. And so, Lord, say, I just choose to release and forgive, Lord, my action of murdering this child. I'm sorrowful. I'm remorse. The Lord, of my action that I caused uh, this decision. And, Lord, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to cleanse me from my head my mind and my emotions and Lord I ask you right now to fill me with the presence of joy that you give us love after love after love the joy of the Lord is our strength and Lord we declare and decree over the lives in Jesus name amen we'll be blessed my wife says hi and I'll talk to you later